Perfect. So guys, we're right at the 15 minute mark. Uh, 4.15 in the afternoon is when we say we're gonna kick off these quick shots. We're at 4.15 Eastern time. So thank you for joining us. We are going to jump in to a big topic on the project toolkit, uh, which is gonna help guide you and your students through the process to get ready for uh, level I, level one, level two, three, hopefully eventually level four projects um, at after the STLP state championship. It's a lot, but it's not too much. So we're gonna jump into it as promised 20 minutes. So I'm gonna start my timer right here on my iPad. Uh, we're gonna get through a lot of information um, if you want to follow along with the project toolkit and open it up on your desktop, you can either click on this um, QR code that we've got right here, or we also have a bit.ly available for you that you can go to bit.ly slash STLP 23 regionals. You can also get to the toolkit from the STLP super sheet and from the STLP projects page on the main STLP website okay so lots of different ways to get to it because we want to make sure that you have easy access to everything that's in the project toolkit um, now why do we have a project toolkit we're going to take you through all the steps from initiating ideas with students all the way through um, presenting at the finals for the STLP state championship, talk about what comes after that. But before we get there, we really have to focus in on why are projects so important? Why do we do them? Um, why do we encourage you to take part in them? Everyone has probably at this point, if you're in education, you've absolutely heard about project-based learning. Um, you've heard about problem-based problem -based learning. Um, you've had a lot of probably hearing folks mention deeper learning. The STLP project cycle takes all of those basic elements of project-based learning and wraps them around the Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology and opportunities for your students to share outside of the building with other adults, with peers, which elevates their learning of the topic that they are choosing, right? So it's a passion project. It's something that is going to take them throughout the year. Um, it's based on so many different quality elements from determining what their initial challenge problem or question will be, um, taking them through a sustainable exploration throughout the year. This project cycle is something that you're kicking off in August, early October. You're working on it throughout the year, and we'll look at the timeline here in a second. We mentioned that the, the key element here is that student voice and choice. This is something that students are excited about. Projects should be something that they select, which makes it a little bit messy sometimes. Um, sometimes we wanna just assign them projects. That's not gonna really get you too far with STLP projects because that student, <laughs> excuse me, that student element of student voice and choice is what makes it really come together into being an, more than just any other project-based learning, but an STLP project on top of it. Opportunities for them to address the standards as mentioned and those presentation experiences are all key elements. Here's the timeline that we need to focus on. Through the timeline, um, and we've put this together to kind of help you give a context to this being a year round activity. Right now, you are most likely in a situation where you're probably, uh, a lot of folks are just kind of getting STLP off the ground for the year. You know, we're recording this mid-October of 2023. This is the STLP project cycle just for 2023. So it's important for us to make sure that all the veterans who are coming back to us this year recognize that things are a little bit different. Every year we try to tweak it. Every year we try to make sure that it is more relevant for your students. So this year, here's the timeline that you need to be aware of and some of the big changes that have come this way. The first thing is that we start with level I back home, and this is a local pitch. Uh, the pitch is the idea of where your students are iterating, ideating, coming up with um, the things that they are passionate about, what they want to investigate for the year, and level I occurs at home, within your school, uh, perhaps within your district. 
Um, perhaps you're all coming together to have students share their project ideas to pitch those project ideas um, locally so that you can determine what are the strongest project ideas for your school, your STLP, your district to choose to advance on to regionals. Um, so that pitch, if you're a veteran, you remember that the last couple of years we've considered the level one regionals to be the pitch level where students are just launching ideas. We're backing that up this year uh, for lots of different reasons, but reason number one is students are having ideas. Let's help them hone those ideas at level I back home at school locally before they get to regionals so that we have even stronger projects um, come December 6th when we all get together for our online regional event. So that is a big, uh, a little bit of a shift, but not too much because level one at regionals, now they've moved on uh, beyond the pitch notion at level I. At level one, they're essentially going to be giving judges a progress report. They're going to be talking about uh, how their project has proceeded, what they're working on, what their goals are, but they're also going to be hitting these seven guiding questions that we'll take a look at in a second and sharing that information with judges over uh, telecommunications on December 6th. It's a super fun day where you'll get feedback to hopefully make your project strong enough. If your project hits the cut score and takes advantage of second chance opportunities, then it'll advance on to level two, which is the semifinal stage where they present at uh, level two STLP state championship. That's March 27th, Lexington, Kentucky. And hopefully after that presentation, they'll be able to advance on to the state finals, which is level three, where they'll actually just promote their project. The goal here is not so much to give a presentation, but now it's to promote the project to the judges and say, here's why we deserve to be the state champions. Uh, which is a little different, but not too different from what we've experienced in the past. And then level four is when we propel your project ideas off into an international uh, stratosphere. If you don't make it on to level four, if you're not named a state champion, great. There's no reason why you can't continue with your project back home. But if you are named a state champion, we're sending state champions to Denver, Colorado this year to represent Kentucky at the International Society for Technology and Education Summer Conference. It's a huge international conference with, with thousands and thousands of educators who are focused on education technology who come uh, to ISTE and they love to hear from the Kentucky STLP state champions because our students are at the forefront of what project-based learning and education technology focused learning is all about. Quick timeline, you can investigate that some more. I have mentioned in the past and will continue to mention how proud we are that everything we do, particularly with the project cycle, is tied directly to the Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology. So you're going to see Empowered Learner, Digital Citizen, Computational Thinker, uh, all seven of the main strands of the Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology are woven through every scoring guide and every level of the project cycle, which is super great because you're going to see here that when we get back into uh, the rubrics and the scoring guides remember empowered learner digital citizen computational keep keep those in the front of your mind because i want to see if you can recognize those actually in the scoring guide um, this year we're focusing on the five p's of projects i mentioned them during the timeline that the pitch happens level i back at your district so that when you get to level one, the progress reports um, during regionals, that's going to be more of a, a highlight update about where the project is at. Not a completed project at level one, but just an opportunity to share with the judges what they're working on and focus on the seven guiding questions. Level two is the presentation stage. That's what happens there at the state championship. Level three is the state final stage. That's where they're promoting and of course propelling. So those five Ps are going to help guide our trajectory throughout the year. Um, focusing back in on that level one, as we mentioned, this is where you're at right now and how you choose in your district or with your STLP to have your students pitch their project ideas is wide open. 
it's left open to you whether this is going to be a small group activity where students are just pitching project ideas and the group uh, to their peers uh, potentially and then the group just is deciding okay these are the projects we want to advance whether you want to pull in adults through the building and have a more formal project pitch fantastic if you want to go as far as kids having some sort of presentation slide um, all of these are up to you all the way up to you might have a district level um, project showcase where it is pulling people from all around the district pulling people from the community whatever um, you want to go with for this we support that but the whole goal is for you to be able to select the strongest project ideas to advance we're not providing you with a cut score or anything like that you get to choose locally who you want to present now if you only have two or three project ideas to begin with level i is pretty straightforward you still want to give students the opportunity though to pitch those ideas because we want them to launch the notion of sharing their ideas with other people not just thinking about it or putting it on paper but we want to use level i locally to give students that first taste of what it means to share their ideas hopefully with other adults or folks maybe that they are are meeting for the first time within the building um, but take advantage of level i to get kids excited because this is where they are investigating this is where the inspiration and the iteration and implementation is coming from we want them to really get out there and start making it about what they are interested in okay so take advantage of some of these resources here you have lots of access to many different resources out there around project-based learning um, brainstorming activities design thinking um, go with whatever works for you and make it roll and take advantage of the excitement that students have here is something that is important to help frame their ideas because we all have students they have giant ideas and we love that but we want to help them sort of pull it together into a cohesive um, implementation statement is what we're calling it where the students are going to be able to fill in some blanks our project is all right now that's the hardest part what is our project and so during a pitch during if this were an elevator pitch as part of level i then they might have you know 60 seconds in an elevator to tell someone about their idea and convince them that it's worthwhile to keep working on right the project here is this is where they get to really narrow it down here's what our project is about here's the challenge that we're trying to address we picked it because it's meaningful to us because fill in the blank and here's the focus back on the technology we're going to use because remember part of stlp student technology leadership program these are technology rich projects right you want to infuse a lot of technology to help solve these problems there are great big problems out there that students are focused on however our focus is also to make sure that not only are they taking the lead on this that l the leadership part of stlp but they're also infusing cool new technology with it to help solve their problem sometimes they're even creating new technology that's fantastic um, but use this implementation statement the level i implementation statement to really focus students in on what they're going to be focusing on for the rest of the year and of course big thanks to russ hockenberry in st in district stlp coordinator in jefferson county who helped come up with this idea of the implementation statement a year ago it's been great we've heard great feedback from coaches who say man but this really helped my kids dial in their giant idea into an actually achievable idea um, that they ended up making even bigger throughout the year there's also this year something very exciting that we get to share with you <coughs> excuse me is the level one project planner uh, because we're always thinking ahead to the next stage the expectation that you need to have as an stlp coach is you're going to make it all the way to level four start with the mindset that you're going to be state champions always be thinking ahead and so when you look at the progress throughout the year you're going to recognize that if at level i you use this project planner which includes that includes that implementation statement we just hit and then starts introducing the students to the guiding questions there's seven guiding questions now they may not have answers for all the guiding questions in the project planner at level i that's expected they're still developing their concepts but this really helps them start to hone in on some of the different categories 
Um, and using the project planner is is really going to be helpful, especially for the teams that you're going to advance on to level one, because when now we're at level one, we're really talking about um, how we are. Here we are now at level one. You'll see that this project planner now is very similar to what you saw at level I, except now they need to know these answers to these guided questions. They need to build on that implementation statement because they are now at the next step. They're the next level of the project cycle. To get to level one, um, teams are going to need to, hold on one sec, there we go. To get to level one, um, Teams are going to have to get registered and to register your students for the level one projects after you've completed level I, after you've selected who your up to four teams will be per school. So there is a little bit of a limit on how many teams can uh, be registered. Let me jump out from this for just one second over to the uh, region regionals info page. This is super important because what you see on the regionals info page is access to the project toolkit that we're going through now, access to the, the registration page, um, access to the scoring guide for level one, and some tips on how you're going to get through the process. So you're going to spend, a, you're going to want to spend some time specific to the level one regionals page and registration um, after you've completed level I and ahead of our December 6th level one regionals presentation day. Um, there's lots of info here, but the thing I wanted to show you was, of course, the registration is linked right here. You'll be able to come in and register your up to four teams, unless of course you are a gold status school or a state champion from last year and you folks are aware of that situation, you get to bring five or six, depending upon your status. But for everyone else, you, <coughs> excuse me, for every other school in the state, you have four open project spots that you get to register teams. Register them now ahead of the November 20th deadline. And um, then you have all the rest of the time until December 6th to get prepared and we'll be able to communicate with you all about that. But what will they actually be doing on December 6th? Well, they're going to be giving a presentation about their project. This is called Level 1. We refer to it as regionals. Um, level I being districts, Level 1 being regionals, 2 and 3 is state, 4 is international. But Level 1, here's what they need. Right in front of them from the beginning, you have the same exact scoring guide with no mysteries. This is what judges will be wanting to the judges will actually be using to score your project teams when they present on December 6th. So this exists, it's out there. You get to take advantage of it right now and there's no mystery. <coughs> there's no surprise uh, scoring category that's going to pop up. It's all right here. And as I mentioned earlier, your students are going to want to be able to have uh, the opportunity to share the progress this is the project process, progress portion of the, the cycle. Here, they're going to answer the seven guiding questions, which are based around um, the standards. There's that empowered learner, digital citizens, knowledge constructor. So they're actually going to answer the question, what technology tools, oh, excuse me, let me go back here. What technology tools were you utilized to bring your project to life? Students need to generate a response for that and be prepared to share it with judges. All of the seven guiding questions are here. The scoring guide is here. Um, take advantage of it. You're going to get online with judges. It's going to be over uh, probably a Google Meet. You're going to want to spend time getting students prepared for talking into the microphone and looking at the camera, all that basic stuff, which are a lot of skill sets that they already have. But now they're going to share a presentation that they create and whatever tool they want to use for that presentation, whether it's hand-drawn card that they hold up, whether it's a slide deck, whether it's a video animation, however they want to do it, um, students are going to share their presentation to the judges, talk about the progress they made, what status they're at, where they're going to go to in the future, answer the guiding questions, include the STLP logo for easy points, 
and then they're going to get feedback from judges and hopefully they're going to get advanced on to level two. Now you can get access to a Google Doc version of this by clicking right here and uh, because I know a lot of folks like to use the uh, chance for students to type in, but you also have access to those guiding questions which will get you on to um, the next page. After your session with the judges, you're going to get some feedback and it's going to be important because this feedback is going to come to you and it's only going to be accessible to you. This is a sample uh, version of what we've used previously. When that feedback comes back, hopefully the most important thing is you're going to get some feedback and comments from judges. They're going to help your students prepare as they get ready to present at level two at state. Um, this information will come through. Know that students will get a, a score. There is not a cut score necessarily. Um, judges can advance as many projects that they see that day as they wish. Um, they can give you essentially a status of on track, you're good to go, keep working, and you're ready to go on to level two at state. You might get a not yet status back from the judges. It says you got a great idea, but you really need to work on these areas. Submit your response to this not yet status and then we'll give you an opportunity to continue to move on to level two but first you have to respond and reflect on the status on the comments that we give you and then a third uh version is the it's time to reboot which is for teams that just just clearly haven't had any time to get fully adequately prepared or they don't appear to be motivated or really interested and maybe they're just there because somebody and believe me we've had students who tell us i don't know why we're here my teacher just told us to get on here and talk it happens and when that happens then we know okay this project maybe needs to go back to the starting block and revisit for next year that's pretty rare but it does happen sometimes because this is a regional level we're trying to advance the best projects onto the state semifinals um, but know that if you get a not yet status, that is still because we're in the vein of project based learning and project based learning is not about shutting down a project idea midway. It's about helping to develop it and make it stronger. So you'll be able to take advantage of judges feedback and get your your team hopefully back on track and on to level two at state. So before we jump into this level two, listen, before uh, you head on probably to winter break since this is happening December 6th is regionals. You'll get your feedback. You'll get to uh, prepare your response if you're not yet team, but immediately you're going to be able to start planning for level two project presentations at state. <coughs> Excuse me. It's really important to let you know right now that you should plan ahead to be at the STLP state champ STLP state championship on May 27th in Lexington at Central Bank Center, and you should plan from the beginning right now to be there for the whole day, all the way through the award ceremony at the end of the day. I can't tell you how many STLP coaches have thought, well, we're not gonna make it, and so I've scheduled the buses to take us home at around lunchtime. Don't do that. Don't do that, because I can tell you how many of those STLP coaches have been pleasantly surprised to find that their level two project team actually advanced to level three. And if you make it to level three, you're guaranteed to be on stage and get an award for your project team. And if you are named by judges at level three to be the state champion, but you're not there, we're going to give that opportunity to the next team in line. Um, so you want to commit now to being there for the award show that goes all the way until like five o'clock uh, that Wednesday, March 27th evening. So start planning now and setting that expectations with your district that you're going to need transportation that doesn't head back from Lexington until like 530 that evening. So start thinking about that. But you'll see at level two, and I know we're just a little bit over, but I'm going to keep squeaking ahead because we need to hit these things. The level two project presentation, as you see here, we're still focused on global collaborator, creative communicator, innovative designer, right? You recognize those as the Kentucky Academic Standards for Technology main header ideas, right? We said that the standards are entwined through the whole project cycle. You'll see here in level two, they're still there. Level two is something that you can put your focus on a little bit later on. We're focused on level I and level one right now, but level two, no, is just a full-fledged presentation. You'll be in a large room with hundreds of other projects that have been selected from the state. You'll have a table, decorate your presentation. It's live and in person. Uh, decorate your presentation space as you wish. 
use technology rich ways to do your presentation. Um, a lot of folks bring displays, monitors, um, fun ways to get judges engaged in your project to sample the work that you're doing and to sell them on the idea that your project has progressed. It's now March 27th. We've come a long way since level I. Here's where we are. And if they get selected, awesome. That afternoon, they will jump over into level three, um, which as you can see, the scoring guide here is still based on those same concepts of the technology Ac academic standards for technology, Kentucky academic standards for tech, except the differences at level three, the presentation's out the window. You've done that. We're not flipping through slides with level three judges. Mm -mm, forget about that. At level three, it's about having a conversation with judges to convince them and promote why your team should be state champs. Your kids should be so passionate about their project that by the time level three judges come, they're capable of talking to judges about that. Now, judges are looking for those that, that personality, so to speak, because if they're selected as state champions with a great project idea, they still need to present to an international audience in Denver. So part of this is looking for who's going to represent Kentucky, KDE, your district, your school, the best. Um, but part of it is also how well thought out is their project and how excited and enthusiastic are they to promote the project to judges. Key points that are vital all the way through. Um, whether you're at level one project presentations, whether two or three, each school, you're limited to four projects per school. Um, again, five if you're gold status, six if you're last year's state champions. Each time your teams present, there is no limit on the size of who's involved in your project, but only up to four students can represent the project to the judges. So at state, if you make it to level two and you've got 30 kids on your project team, great. Bring all 30 kids. There's much for them to see and experience. But when the judges come around at the predetermined time, everyone else clears out except for the four up to four presenters. Same thing happens with level three. And then <coughs> we'll talk about what happens at level four if you advance onto that on how many students can participate at that point. It's flexible. But just know four teams per school, four presenters. But really, it's unlimited on how many people participate in your school. In the past, our biggest success projects have been projects that engage with the entire school, that have multiple teachers involved, multiple students at different grade levels and different content areas all involved. Um, but know that those four presenters just, you find the kids that are great presenters and they're the ones who represent the teams. Again, it's really important for you to know that all of this stuff is in the project toolkit. Um, it's as succinct and, and, and tight as it ever has been. We have pulled it together to be as lean and mean and as necessary for you as possible because we know you don't have all day to go through everything. If you want to access it, take a look at it. Go to STLP 23 Regionals. Uh, go to the Super Sheet. Go to STLP Projects page. There's lots of different ways to get to the Project Toolkit and the Info page. Um, a great place to start is right here. If you end up having questions, which I know you will, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, through our stlp at education.ky.gov email address, and we will be pumped to get back to you as quickly as possible. Okay, right now that's been, uh, I'm over 20 minutes. It's a lot, but it's a year long process and it's important for you to really launch it well. Level I is where you're at right now. We're excited about level one registration going live. So there's a lot happening, a lot to do. I wish you the best of luck and we can't wait to see, see you and ask you, what's your project? All right, thanks guys, take care.